The future of our food is under threat, and factory farming is a big factor. When we think about the key trends that are undermining the ability of humanity to feed itself, these include global warming, of course, but also factors such as soil erosion and water scarcity. When we look at, for example, grain stocks as a key indicator of uh, the health of our global food basket, we know that global grain stocks are under pressure. It's worth remembering that one in every three tonnes of grain are now being fed to factory farmed animals. Animals that are reared permanently indoors, the food grown somewhere else and brought to them. Effectively, what we've got is a competition between feeding people and feeding farmed animals. And more recently, of course, cars have entered that competition with an increasing amount of our arable land being devoted to growing biofuels. When we look to the middle of this century and we think about the big trends, we're likely to see more people, more animals, less land, less oil, less water. The human population is predicted to grow from six to seven billion as it is now to nine billion or more people by 2050. Already every year we produce over 60 billion farm animals globally two-thirds of them on factory farms. Today's livestock population worldwide is responsible for producing one in every five tonnes of society's greenhouse gas emissions. By the middle of the century, by 2050, it's predicted that the livestock sector will double. Now, at a time when we need to reduce greenhouse gases, doubling livestock population will make that challenge even more difficult. And at the same time, we're likely to see less land. We're likely to have gone over peak land, if you like. Because no matter what we do in terms of climate change mitigation, sadly, the sea is going to rise. The question really is, by how much? It's possible that by the end of the century, there'll be a two degree rise in average temperatures. That could even happen by the middle of the century. If it does, then that would wipe away, through sea level rise, two million square kilometres of land. That's eight times the size of the UK. To put that into perspective, over the next 20 years, it's said that we're going to need, just to keep pace with food demand, two million square kilometres of new agricultural land. And at the same time, we're likely to soon be going over peak oil, the point at which cheap, easy oil becomes ever more scarce and ever more expensive. What's oil got to do with agriculture? Well, it's got a lot to do with industrial agriculture. Oil is used to produce the artificial pesticides, the artificial fertilizers that prop up the industrial system. Without it, the economics of cheap meat begin to unravel. And on top of all of that, we're likely to see less water. We're already looking at a prospect of two billion people in the world living in areas designated as water-scarce areas. By 2050, it's predicted that between four and seven billion people could be living in water-scarce areas. Factory farming is the engine room of the livestock explosion. It's hugely wasteful of precious grain, water and oil and will make it even harder for humanity to feed itself into the future. That is why we owe it to future generations to produce food in ways which are humane and sustainable and to go beyond factory farming.